you know, there's a lot of fans out there that are dying for a TV 14 uh, professional wrestling product. And uh, I think it, it has uh, grounds to succeed uh, in this day and age. How you feeling? I, <laughs> I guess I'm feeling a little hungover. It's Vegas. If we're being course. honest, dude, it's Vegas. I'm gonna party. Uh, I've wrestled uh, 85 percent of my matches hungover, and that's legit truth. I've wrestled some of my greatest matches completely hungover, where I, before the show, slept under a table or something, and then woke up magically and performed to the best of my ability. So <laughs> I think we're gonna uh, follow the same routine here in Las Vegas. Oh, so that means you'll have to get drunk tonight, so that for double or nothing. You'll be hungover. Yeah, I think uh, I think all in. I was hungover as fuck. Oh, great. I think. I think. Uh, let me think. What was I doing? No, maybe actually not. Maybe that one. I was like, I need to take this one serious. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm wrestling in front of a few thousand people tomorrow. But I think I think I think I can have a little fun tonight and uh, gamble a little bit more and party a little bit more. I won a couple hundred dollars last night. Hey. Drank a few cocktails. Some frozen drinks oh, they in they, those giant yard uh, whatever the glasses whatever yeah, they call they, them they 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 send you in the blackout mode and uh, drink responsibility people drink responsible it's like you're still drunk drink responsibility yeah drink responsibility <laughs> something i don't do <laughs> i never drink responsibility i'm the, I, I drink the fucking opposite of that it ha it's like a uh, probably a glass with like a skull and crossbones on it that's nice. what i drink What's usually your drink of choice? Man, I drink everything. I drink a lot of beer, of course, as you can tell by my little belly. But <laughs> I drink a lot of uh, Jack and Cokes, a, a lot of uh, Red Bulls and vodkas, and I'm a mess. What, what about when you were playing last night? What's the game that you actually won money on? I think I won a little bit on blackjack. I think I won 200 on a slot machine, actually. I was playing with this girl, and, and uh, she was... Uh, she was I'm like, why did you put me on this shitty slot machine? It's like this goldfish slot machine. And uh, she, I'm like, I'm leaving. And then I tried one more, and I won $200. Hey. And, then, and then she called me an idiot. So we're, I think, about exactly 24 hours from Double or Nothing. Yes. Are there any nerves at all? Not at all. You know, I'm just, uh, once you get there, you know, it's a whole different ball game. You look at the entranceway. You look at the, you know, all the seats are going to be filled. It's not like an indie show where you're like, What's going to happen here? It's, it's sold out, 14,000 people. You know, this is the same building that Halloween Havoc happened in. And uh, me being that big WCW mark I am, that, that amazing, amazing five-star match between Warrior and Hogan in 98, there will be no fireballs in my match tomorrow. As much as Cody and the Bucks keep on trying to get me to do some kind of fireball spot, I know that's how it's going to go. I, I, I know this place is haunted, so it ain't happening. Being a big WCW mark, how do you think Joey Janela would do in WCW? Well, we're going to see. Oh, well, hold on. Are you saying AEW is WCW? No, it's not WCW. It's, uh, of course, WCW was its own thing, but, you know, I'm wrestling on TNT, and that's pretty sick. You know, I, uh, yeah, it's pretty wild, but uh, yeah. I would do great in WCW. I think, actually, I'd be uh, probably not so great. I think I'd be somewhat a... Uh, Maybe I'd feud a little bit with uh, Norman Smiley for the hardcore title, maybe. And, okay. uh, yeah, have some fun times, but the business has changed since then. You don't have to be a giant body guy to uh, make some money. Who was it specifically that reached out to you uh, about AEW and bringing you on for this? Well, I, I did the spring break two show, and I hit up uh, the next week I hit up Matt Jackson, and I said, um, who do I have to uh, set a VHS and an 8x10 to to get on this show? And Matt's like, let me talk to the boys. And then five minutes later, he's like, you're on. Wow. I said, what? I said, well, I guess I'm over. I, <laughs> I don't know if you guys want to book me for this, this giant show. And uh, that's when they first announced the show. And uh, I was like, I was amped up. And then they sold out the show in 20 minutes. And uh, I was like, all right, here we go. You know, we got to make the best of this uh, crazy situation that I've been put in. Uh, and I didn't know who I was wrestling at first. It changed about 30 times. And then they put me against one of their uh, own, Adam Page. And that was a big showcase match. You know, that's a lot of trust they put into me to uh, make that match what it was. And it, uh, I think we stole the show. I think we had the show stealer of all in. I think, you know, we 
we had the sleeper match of the show for sure. That was a hell of a match. Have you watched it back since? I watched it a few times. You know, uh, uh, sometimes when the girls don't believe me, I'm a professional wrestler. I'll pull that match up on YouTube, and say, "Hey, this is me uh, wrestling in front of uh, 12,000 people." I watched it a few times. It's, it's a great match, and uh, you know, uh, we went in there, we just burned it down, and yeah. uh, introduced a lot of new people to uh, who Joey Janela was that day, and. Uh, I'm very grateful to the Bucks, Cody, uh, Tony, and uh, Kenny, all these guys that uh, put trust in me to, uh, you know, be a part of this whole uh, shebang. Does being a professional wrestler help or hurt in the dating scene? Um, I think a lot of girls don't get it. They ask me. A lot I of said, people don't get it. Yeah, it's like, what do you do for work? I'm a professional wrestler. Oh, like UFC? No. I do the fake Hulk Hogan shit. That's what I tell them. The fake Hulk Hogan shit without the racism. <laughs> what match, other than your own, uh, tomorrow are you looking forward to the most? Man, there's a lot of matches tomorrow. Um, I know the Lucha Bros and uh, the Young Bucks are going to completely have an uh, unbelievable barn burner to say. And uh, you'll probably get rated eight and a half stars by Dave Meltzer. There's a couple matches that can be rated more stars by Dave Belter tomorrow because the, this card, I could see when he looked at it, his eyes widened up, sparked a little blue chew boner, and he was ready to go. <laughs> you mentioned you, know, you were over because you got booked on this. When did you realize as a wrestler with what you were doing in the ring that the crowd was really into it? Man, uh, when I was wrestling, uh, having my uh, series with Leo Rush, it started to pick up a little bit of steam on the Indies and I got thrown off the building by Zandig and the clip was became one of the most viral clips in wrestling history besides the Joey Ryan dick flip of course, of course. but uh, after that it was kind of like uh, there was a lot of hate towards me and then a lot of the diehard wrestling fans understood why I did that spot uh, why I lived that, that moment um, and then I realized that they started fighting for me and pushing for me. And whenever someone would bash me, the Cornets or the Landstorms or whoever in the world, these fans would fight back against them for me and try to fight my battles. And, uh, you know, uh, that's when I started to realize that I had a special connection with the, the wrestling fans. And then uh, we went to spring break the next year, which was a spur of the moment thing. And uh, the response to that was insane. So it was like, at that moment in time, you're like, wow, you're doing something right and you're taking the right steps in this business to uh, make yourself some money so you don't have to deliver pizzas anymore or whatever I was doing, a little prostitution. You know, I don't have to do any of that. I think if the casual fan were to walk in here and I said, that's the guy who jumped off a building, they'd be like, "This, you're not a hardcore guy. You don't look like a hardcore guy. I have a reputation of doing some... Uh, some wild stuff. Uh, yeah. I don't say I'm a hardcore wrestler. I can mesh with any style, and I've proven that over the last couple of years that I'm probably the most versatile professional wrestler in the world right now. I do comedy, uh, hardcore. I wrestled Zack Sabre Jr. in a 30-minute match. Uh, I wrestle a lot of those guys, Gresham, all those guys. I can hang with them all. And, I, and uh, I'm just proving that uh, not only do I love one form of professional wrestling, you don't have to love one form of professional wrestling. You can love professional wrestling as a whole and uh, just because you don't like something doesn't mean someone else doesn't enjoy it for what it is. So when you're standing on top of that building about to go off, what's going through your mind? I'm just like, all right, I'm going to die. <laughs> That's what it was. Like, uh, was there any thought of like, I might actually get seriously injured here? Uh, seriously, if you look at that clip again, if you play it in slow motion, I came about two feet away from hitting my head on the, the top bar of that truck and if wow. I did that, it would have been... Uh, yeah, it would have been uh, brain damage city for me, but uh, it worked out. It was basically my Illuminati ceremony into the professional wrestling business, and that's what I like to call it because that was uh, it was a ceremony, and it was it put me on the map. It put Game Changer Wrestling on the map, and uh, Game Changer Wrestling doing shows every part of the country in Japan this year, and uh, you know I'm part of the reason that's happening, and that's great to see. And it's going to be sad when I have to leave in uh, October and stop doing any dates but you know I'm going to be with those guys to the end you know if I'm working in the backstage and whatnot and scouting new guys like dude tomorrow the Battle Royal has four guys that we put on the map Jungle Boy um, Dustin Dustin Thomas uh, who debuted at the last spring break and a couple other guys that I'm not going to name right now but uh, yeah it's going to be uh, it's very special for us to watch that and uh, 
and it's, a, it's very special for me to participate in something like that where there's guys that I actually helped uh, establish on the Indies that yeah. to the point that they're wrestling now at the MGM Grand in front of uh, 14,000 people. So right now you can take other indie bookings, but I think we got to make this clear. Once TNT starts, there's no more indie bookings for any AEW guys. Yeah, I, yeah we didn't know how fast this TV deal was going to come into uh, play. So uh, once TV comes in, you know, it, you got to be healthy for TV. I can't, I can't go around me, you know, because there's no light mode Joey Janela. What you see in front of 14,000 people is what you get in front of 30, 50, 100 500 people I'm the same wrestler everywhere and you're never going to see me mail it in you're never going to see me stick to a routine a formula like a lot of these guys do they get a lot they get lazy and that's why they lose their buzz pretty fast in uh, professional wrestling I'm not one of those guys and I, I, I noticed that that uh, if I don't stick to a routine if I don't go by that formula I just keep on making myself a better wrestler and a better performer I know that you're friends with John Moxley Dean Ambrose have you talked to him at all this week I, I'm not friends with him, actually. I've, You're not? I'm sorry. No, I, 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 th I think I've met him once. Okay. Uh, I think, uh, you tweeted about him. Yeah, yeah. I think it's because we're both from like the kind of the same universe, that, uh, that hardcore Philly fan base universe of uh, professional wrestling. And that was like a dream match a lot of fans wanted to see yeah. uh, throughout the years when I was working for CCW, GCW. They wanted... They wanted to see me versus John Moxley. I don't know what his situation is right now. Uh, I, I have no idea. But uh, you know, whatever he chooses to do, if he wants to sit home, he can. He's made enough money where he can sit home for the next ten years. Yeah. Open up a hot dog stand somewhere in Arizona, and you know, fucking uh, do whatever he wants. But I, I'm sure he doesn't want to do that. I'm sure the reason he left the WWE is to use his creativity. Uh, that he's always had, and a lot of it has been stripped throughout the years. And he had a great fucking run. He had one of the best runs the last 10 years, you know. Uh, some of the stuff he's done in the WWE was marvelous, but I think it was time to move on and, uh, you know, spark some of that fire again that he's, he once had uh, for his love for professional wrestling. Is there any talk of you having that hardcore style in AEW? Uh, there's a lot of talk about it, actually. Uh, they, they have me, Jimmy Havoc, who's known for that in England, who I've had many battles with. Yeah. Darby Allen, who is an amazing athlete, and he's somebody that is like me. He doesn't stick to a formula. He, every match you see him have is completely different from the last, and he doesn't care about his body. He does it for his love, for the business. He does it for the fans. I respect that guy so much. I mean, with, with, with us three at uh, AEW, it's going to be... Uh, it's going to be a wild ride, and we're going to bring uh, some craziness back to uh, mainstream professional wrestling. We're going to bring some of that craziness back to TV. We're going to make a lot of people online question, uh, are we going in reverse? Uh, is, is professional wrestling uh, going back to hell? Hey, hey I want to bring, bring, bring professional wrestling back to hell, so <laughs> what better way to do that than uh, AEW? Well, a lot of fans are wondering if it's going to be PG or not, but if you're saying you can do hardcore stuff, then that, that seems pretty clear. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to be PG or not. Uh, I think the business has moved in a PG direction, but there's, uh, there's, uh, you know, there's a lot of fans out there that are dying for a TV 14 uh, professional wrestling product, and uh, I think it it has. Uh, grounds to succeed uh, in this day and age uh, with uh, WWE being a big PG product I think uh, a lot of people are dying for that that gritty indie feel yeah. uh, on a large scale again and uh, you know we certainly with this roster we can bring it back but uh, yeah I watch a lot of the 90s stuff recently I watched it a lot of throughout the years and I some of the stuff I watch I said I can't believe they got away with that but uh, right. as a society we moved in a, a you know, uh, we're moving in a great direction, I think. Uh, and um, I think professional wrestling, you know, we can go back to a TV 14, but leave a lot of that weird trash back in the 90s. What specifically has changed for you since you announced that you were signing for AEW? Obviously, a larger audience is now aware of you. Yeah, um, yeah a lot has changed. You know, I don't have to hustle anymore outside the business. I can live comfortably. I can... Uh, uh, the money now is is ridiculous. I was really delivering pizzas two years ago. I was driving Uber. I was working in a factory. I could never keep a job. 
and now we're going to see if I can keep the biggest job I've ever had, uh, <laughs> living my dream, uh, being a professional wrestler, notably on uh, TV. And uh, let's see, uh, it's going to be a challenge for me. I never worked for a big corporate environment, but uh, it's going to be a challenge. But uh, I think my passion and my uh, my my work ethic speaks for itself, and uh, that will overshadow a lot of the, the weird things I do outside the business, whether it be on my social media or if you catch me on the street in Vegas pile driving a fan tonight after drinking seven frozen margaritas. <laughs> How easy is it to find these glasses? Wait, wait, I don't know. I was like... Yeah, there's someone announcing over here. Oh. It what? sounds like Howard Finkel, but I don't yeah, think I it like, is. I, I got thrown off for a yeah. sec. I got, I panicked. Uh, what did you say about the glasses? How easy is it to find them? Uh, find them? Like, do you have a guy? Yeah, these are Shinesty, but, you know, I went through Neff and Pit Viper. I think, I was just talking to somebody, I think Pit Viper's going to throw me some kind of sponsorship, so we'll see if that comes Well, back. they should. Yeah, I was wearing those, and then I switched to these. These guys kind of sponsor me right now. Whenever I ask for sunglasses, they just send me a bunch. So thank you, Shinesty. Uh, We'll all work together. It'll be one happy, crazy sunglass family. I honestly don't think fans could picture you wearing any other sort of sunglasses. No, because if I, I don't wear these glasses, I, I, I'm I unrecognized in public. I just look like some Take them off for a minute. Just Who's like, this guy? Right now, I look kind of crazy, but usually when I'm just walking around in my daily life, I just look like some weird dirtbag kid. <laughs> <laughs> I put on these glasses, and then all of a sudden, I'm in the airport, and go, that's Joey Janela. If I wasn't wearing those glasses, no one would know who, who I am. So, uh, yeah, these glasses give me strong superpowers. And, uh, and uh, I guess, yeah. There's no reason to wear the glasses other than the fact that you are Joey Janela. I'm the bad boy, you know. That's I live right. the life. The, the same person you see in wrestling is the same person you get out of the ring. I am the same guy. And, uh, but were you always the bad boy? Like, if we look back to your first handful of matches. Yeah, I was always the bad boy. And that always didn't wasn't the best um, way to get over with the boys, uh, being the way I am. But eventually guys warmed up to me and they realized that I love the business and I had a strong work ethic and uh, here I am. Uh, StarCast had uh, probably the, I, I, I couldn't believe the response to uh, me and Penelope signing today. It was quite unreal. 300 plus people lined up to meet us. Wow. And. Uh, Man, that was uh, something special. Uh, I always cherish it. If I only make it this far, somehow my AEW run goes awry and I become some kind of degenerate alcoholic and I happen to, I don't know, I don't know. Do I'll drive crazy. people on the street. I'll drive yeah. someone on the street and I get arrested and then I get fired from AEW. If this is the, the farthest I make it to have a line of 300 fans, hey, I'm, I'm cool with that. Well, it's actually only going to get better from here, and that's the best part about it. I think so. I think I'm going to become a massive superstar. I think I'm going to make millions. I think I'm going to kiss more women than any wrestler has ever kissed in the history of wrestling. I'm, I'm calling you out, Ric Flair. I'm, I'm coming for that 10,000 uh, 10, challenge. Uh, I'm still young. I'm, only, I'm still only in my 20s, so yeah. i got a lot of time to do it. And, uh, you know, single boy now, so... I have all day, all night, baby. Especially with the blue chew all up in the air. They better give me, a, they better give me some samples for uh, tonight, tomorrow, for next week. They're having a good time. Because they, they better give me, I can't even find a, a, a tent or anything. I need to find the, the blue chew, say I'm Joey Janela, and I want to get boned up tonight, baby. <laughs> you can be rock hard like Jack Swagger. I don't know what that means. Oh, you didn't. Never mind. Everyone else will understand this reference. Okay. You want me to explain it to you? He won his last MMA match, and in the in the ring, he said he's rock hard with excitement, oh, okay. and everyone's calling him rock hard. I'm rock hard with the excitement every minute of the day. Uh, you know, uh, boners all day long. The worst is the worst is when you fall asleep on a plane and someone tries to get up to use the bathroom next to you, and you just have rock hard boner. And then they say, all right, you got to get up. And then you just boned up. It's real embarrassing. You don't do the, you don't do the tuck? No, I, I just woke up. Just sitting there boned up. In my Zubas. <laughs> We've been trying to make this happen for a while. I so. don't even need Blue Chew to get rock hard. But that's going to bring me to the next level. That's it. That's going to bring me to that next, like, you're going to, that's like putting a new engine in the bad boy, you know? Bring my performance <laughs> level up to a new high. I think, uh. 
We're going to try some of those blue chews out at the after party tomorrow. We're going to see what happens. We're going to have a little bit of fun. We'll see you there. Um, I appreciate your time. Thank you for making this happen. Because hey, we've been trying for a while, so yeah, like, appreciate your yeah. time. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it's been like a year and a half. But now, now. you're even more over. It's yeah, perfect. You better post this. Better get me lots of followers. Yeah, well, tell follow, people. Follow me on Twitter, Janella Baby. Uh, Instagram, I think I'm the bad boy Joey Janella. Don't add me on Facebook. I will not add you. <laughs> Girls, if you feel free. You can slip in my DMs. <laughs> Be boo chewed up all weekend, baby. Just slip right in. Hey, welcome inside StarCast, by the way. That's where we just did this interview with Joey Janela. We were facing away from it because StarCast was still going on at the time. Didn't want to interrupt everything that was going on with the wrestlers and the fans. Uh, as you can see now, it's, uh, it's cleared out behind us here. Although that doesn't mean that you won't see a wrestler or two maybe popping in behind us. Uh, thanks for checking out this interview with Joey Janela. Um, if you don't already, please subscribe, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this one. I actually just said to Joey as he walked away, this is going to be an interview a lot of people are going to watch now, but this is going to be an interview that people are going to watch in a year from now, two years from now, three years from now, as Joey Janelle just keeps getting more and more over and people just want to take in more and more.